every time for the last two years or so, whenever we've spoken of this problem, it's been pointed out to us that you know, in the past, we've had a worse NPA problem and you were very actively involved at that time and it was resolved. So you all are making too much of it. Are we making too much of it or is it different from what it was in the past? I mean, we've gone through a... No, no, but I think that you have to analyze it. Yeah. You know, in the sense that what is the reason for rising NPAs? I mean, supposing there is a crisis, we have a drought, for example, or there is a crisis. Yeah. Then you can expect that the NPAs will go up. Because then the NPAs will go up because people, or rather those who have borrowed funds from the banks, they are genuinely not able to pay. So that part, for example, we have to, uh, we have to accept and provide the means, provide the room for people to delay payments at a reasonable rate, you know. Uh, the other side is that if you don't take action on NPAs when things are going well, when growth is good, corporate profits are rising, um, then you can ask the question that why these rising NPAs? Because NPAs affect the people in general. So this point, I mean, so you have to analyze this thing and, de and decide now what you can see at, at the moment. The uh, government, the banks, the Reserve Bank have also taken a lot of measures now to reduce NPAs and I hope that will work. But they're all coming from large corporate borrowers at this stage. Yeah. Um, which points to, uh, you know, perhaps some weaknesses in the corporate credit culture. Perhaps, you know, we've, we've left, uh, you know, not... No, I think we could have acted earlier. We should have acted earlier. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, that is, you know, that one can always see in retrospectively. But what would we have done or what I would have done when we were there at that particular point of time and we see large corporates and they do, their profitability has gone down, credit demand has gone down, for example for goods and services, uh, then if you, if you don't allow the corporate sector, or large corporates or good corporate sectors to function mm. because you are trying to get the money back, mm. then they would not be able to buy inputs or something. So it is a question of making a decision. I mean, I leave the decision to you so far as the present <laughs> <laughs> no, set of measures are concerned on the NPAs uh, prior to what is happening now. What is happening now is welcome, good, and whether it could have been introduced a year or two earlier, that I can't say. But this, uh, the public sector, banking sector uh, space is sort of wilting away in some ways. Uh, they don't have capital, hence they can't take haircuts. Uh, they, they can't grow their business. Uh, do you think that instead of this slow debts, maybe we need to reform the banking space finally, whether it's consolidation or I don't know what No, but this, uh, nobody can disagree. I mean, for example, the state bank consolidation is going on just yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You know, the government has also taken measures, for example, to transfer funds to the banks, mm -hmm. public sector banks, mm -hmm. to meet their capital requirements. Mm -hmm. So we have to take all those measures. Now, whether you should privatize or whether you should not privatize, that's a, that's a decision which the government has to take. Because public sector banks also have a very positive impact. Because if you look at the public sector banks, the total amount of lending to the relatively poor sections of the people would certainly be higher as a percentage. Absolutely. Then it would be the tr yeah, then, then it would be true of say most private sector banks. And I was involved in setting up the private sector banks as you know. Yes. To give competition and to have some uh, access some for people to have access right, and in large amounts or to uh, private sector governance part. But you must also remember that public sector is doing an important public public banks are doing a very important job. And for example if you look at rural areas, you go to rural areas or semi-rural areas, you will find all banks who are operating there are public sector banks. So they are providing access to the persons who didn't have access to banks. So I think we have to combine both and uh, that is, you know, yes, private sector banks, they should operate and public sector banks, they should also operate. But public sector banks, the main issue in regard to public sector bank NPAs is then the government has to step in and do the performance appraisal much more, uh, you know, much more time-based mm. than retrospectively. And that is being done now. So, yeah. yeah. To your mind, and I know you're writing a book on, you know, future ideas for India. Uh, to, your, uh, to your mind, what is an ideal structure of, ba of the banking sector for India going ahead? Should it be more private? Because, you know, even though the private banks have come in, they haven't wrested much market share. So in terms of market share of the banking sector, the public sector has remained above that 70%. No, no I right? think the most important issue is not the ownership of banks. Okay. The most important issue, to my mind, is the access to banks 
for the largest percentage of our population, including in rural and semi-urban areas. So I think that you can't, it's not either or. We have to expand the banking system and we have to make banking system accessible. And that's where the public sector banks can play a very important role. But obviously, you have to then manage the banks in a way so that, the, so that what you might say, the government control over these banks is less and it is the board of the banks which decides in public sector or private sector. They are accountable to shareholders, the bank, the government is the shareholder, so they must be accountable to the banks, but it's not the ministries which need to decide. So I think this is the different issue I mean that I'm emphasizing, mm -hmm. which is giving autonomy to, banks. to the to individual banks and then appraise the performance, monitor the uh, performance and decide whether the board we have constituted or they are responsible and they are doing what we want them to do in country's interest. But that autonomy, sir, I mean, uh, should ha there should be some distance from ownership for that autonomy, right? Because on paper, everybody says banks are independent, they do their own operational decisions. Every government has said that. But you, I mean, so I'm not even saying privatize. That whole concept of, you know, yeah. an investment company or something to distance yourself from the ownership. Isn't that essential, sir? No, don't use the word distance. Okay, what do I, what is the right word? Monitor. Monitoring, accountability or performance is essential. Yeah, but... And that has to be monitored by the owner or this main shareholder which may be the government. Sure. But now you see one major thing has been done is to disinvestment part, hmm. to reduce this um, government ownership of banks as in percentage terms. Hmm. So that's welcome. Hmm. And uh, now the second thing which needs to be done is to that we should make it uh, much many, the, the boards much more accountable. Okay. And the, then as a shareholder or large shareholder they, they are accountable to the government. We can monitor performance. Right. And if you find that the certain bank is not performing well, then you have to decide why it is not performing well. Is it because of um, they are operating in rural areas, the branches are there, and there is a drought, and their, uh, their performance in the last two years have been affected because of this or that? And then you do the need for.